Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. This is PJ. Today, I would like to show you how to make an infinity ring with the B setting with very easy way in the Rhino 3D software. Are you ready? Let's get started. So that's starting from the scratch. We are going to uh, come into the front view and draw a circle. And this will be your ring size. I'm setting up for 16 millimeter. You can set it up for whatever size you want it. And then we are going to bring in a stone. This stone is available for you to download at the link uh, in the description below. You just need to sign up the newsletter and then uh, you can download this stone. Uh, first of all, we need to decide how big the stone we want it to be. Uh, to sizing the stone, let me bring on, on the side, we can simply just go into use a 3D scale tool and make sure that you all snap, you wanted to uh, make sure it is on and your vertex is on. And then we want to snapping into this point to this point. So I basically want a stone to become 1.5 millimeter or less because I want to do the B setting there. So kind of moving the stone back to the center, we want to do uh, align centers and just type it zero there. Okay, and moving a stone to the top. So kind of give us a guideline for how big our cross section need to be. Now coming into the right view, I'm going to draw a, a square and the square with the round corner. So I'm going to click on the square with the round corner and kind of set it up for the stone. My stone is 1.6 millimeter. I actually wanted to have a point 1.5 on each side. So it will be 1.8 millimeter. Let's take a look and see how it look. So 1.8 by 1.8, right? And then I want a corner to be rounded just a little bit. It will look nicer on the render. And that's moving this uh, square back to the center on our rail. So make sure your midpoint is on, your quadrant is on, on all snap, and that's snapping it back. So if our stone is sitting right there, it gives us a little bit room for the prong. And also take a look on the top view, you will have a little bit room there uh, for polish. So I think this is uh, good to go. All right. So now the second things I wanted to do is because I want to make it turn. So I need to give them uh, two cross section. So let me just mirror that one to the bottom and something like that. Okay. Now, if you done this before with the sweep one, you know, this is the rail, this is the cross section. And I always tell people say, you need to have them align. So that way you will get the ring shank and we close the sweep and we'll get something like that. So you will get the ring shank is, is something like this. Look like a wire is being bending and the direction, everything is right. I'm going to move this one to the side for you to compare. So this time we're still gonna use the sweep one and we're gonna click, this is the rail, this is a cross section and we want everything lined up here, right? But what I like to do is have it spin additional 90 degree compared to the original one and spin it back. So I actually want to move this ahead like 90 degree. And let's take a look on that. You can see that it's kind of rotated or spin it. And then if you close the sweep, then you will get something like this. Let's click OK and take a look on that. If you spin it way too much. Let's say I want to sweep one and uh, PJ say I need to align here, align here. And I feel like I want to spin a lot more. So I'm going to go 90 degree and 180 degree. And this is what's going to happen is you're going to see this is like cross 180 degree and then you get this point and you're not able to print it out. This is not a valid um, model uh, to print it out. So be really, really careful. Okay, so let me do one more time. We want to sweep one here and here and make sure you want them to align really well first and then moving 90 degree ahead. And then so that way you will get this twisting band and uh, we want to close the sweep and that's how we get this band. All right. The second thing is we need to 
arrange the stone. So we need to have a curve on on the surface in order for us to arrange the stone. So let's go ahead to use extract the ISO curve. And then we want to extract on this surface. That's snapping into the midpoint there. So then our stone will follow this twisting surface and make a circle and coming back. And let's see if that works. We are going to use the array along the curve. And we have this stone is going to array and follow this curve there. All right. So notice that the orientation on the one on the bottom is not right. So we kind of need to change it. Sometimes what you can do is you can change to roll light and see if that uh, working well, but actually it's not, it's just flip it. All right, so instead to using array along the curve, we do want it to use along the curve on the surface. So let's try this one. Select this object. The base point, I'm going to select at this midpoint here. Select the curve on the surface. We're going to pick up this uh, curve we extract from the surface, and we're going to pick up this surface. So notice that now it will flowing really nicely on it. But now, how many do we need it? I'm not so sure. So I'm going to click it here as a divide. And I'm going to try 36 and see how it goes. And it actually went pretty well. So let's hit enter. So one thing I want to point out here is we were measuring for 1.5 millimeter stone and then uh, the width should be okay. But once it's turned around, the surface is no longer um, wide enough for compensates the stone right there, right? So in fact, we might need to have a stone get smaller to make the stone a little bit smaller. So let's try one more time. We wanted to do the transform array along the curve on the surface. And so we pick up the object snapping here, and this is our curve. This is the surface. And since the stone is smaller, so I need to try more of them. So maybe I want to try 48 and see how it goes. It seems to look really nice there. Now, next we need to making the prong. You can have the full prong or you can have the shear prong. Make it a straight line and I simply just need to pipe it for whatever diameter you think is suitable. Okay, so then I'm going to moving this one over here as a shear prong. And then I also want to mirror to the other side to be symmetrical. So then we will have the prong there. That's moving this prong down like this. And we're going to use the same command. Uh, let's do the transform array along curve on the surface. And then we want to pick up the base point. We want to pick the same point right here like we did on the stone. And then this is the curve. This is the surface. And we actually want to divide it the same way for 48 of them. And that's how we get this one there. Once we have done that, we want to copy for what we did uh, on the side over here. So let's go ahead to extract the ISO curve. And we want to extract on um, the surface, snapping into the midpoint right there. Okay. What we wanted to do next is pick up this mesh here. And I want to pick up two prong, poly surface and this poly surface. And simply mirror to the other side like this. So this time we want to starting from the bottom uh, to be easy to tell. I'm just going to change in the color. So that's changing this into the red and that's changing the stone into the green. So let's go ahead to use the same command array along curve from the surface and we're going to pick up this one. The base is going to be snapping into the quadrant there and the curve will be this one. The surface will be this one. Okay, so notice that they are upside down and it's actually there's nothing in the option for you to change it, right? So I find it's the easiest way instead of go to, you know, changing the direction and everything. I'm going to record a history and I'm coming into the divide and with the same number with the history recorded. Okay, and hit enter, right? So they all appear upside down, but it's actually facing uh, the right angle on the ring. 
So what I wanted to do is pick up this original one on both poly surface there. And because I record a history, I'm going to flip it 180 degree back here. And then I'm going to move it down to the surface like that. All right. So instead of, you know, trying to figure out all the direction and we simply can do that. And I'm just going to move this back to the center and double check and if everything is flow nicely. And once we are done, we can delete this original one. And they will say what they did the history, but that's fine. And that's how you make this infinity ring band. Do you enjoy the stone setting and want to learn more? I have a stone setting mini course and it's completely free, specific design for the beginner wanting to learn jewelry CAD and understand how the stone is setting for the CAD design. I will start talking about the stone setting concept and use a basic process as a practice. And I'll also show you how to custom make your own design for the process. I'll put a link in the description below. Hope to see you in that mini course. Thank you for watching and I will see you next.